So now I'm gonna kind of wander around. Oh my god! <laughs> So this is my first time ever crossing the Mexican border. So I just kind of parked my van on one side and they let you walk across. And I figured I've never been to Mexico. I am this close to the border. I might as well hop across and have myself some food. So I went and I had myself some enchiladas in Mexico. Of course, I got a Coke to go with that. And uh, yeah, never been to Mexico before. So I'm in uh, Mexico for the first time ever. And, uh, I had really delicious enchiladas that place is awesome um you know first time here i'm kind of nervous walking around but i'm going to check out this plaza and then head back all right you guys know i had to urbex in mexico abandoned exploration little bathroom back there it was like a little shop right here that was abandoned. I had to hop in for that experience for myself. Gee, you guys just witnessed my first time ever in Mexico. Um, I was only there for a little bit. I parked here and I walked across the border and uh, I've never done that before. So I was like walking across, coming back, everything. The whole time I was there, I was like so nervous and I had butterflies and all kinds of stuff. I was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? Um, so I've never done that before. So that was pretty cool to do. Um, really easy. Actually, it's not, it's not really that bad at all. You know, I was just nervous. And then I think since I do everything by myself, you know, I didn't, I don't have anybody to lean on in that situation. So I just kind of had to be nervous over there, but I was just there long enough to eat, which was delicious and cheap and just walk around and check stuff out. And then you guys see, I did a little bit of, of Urbex in Mexico so I can, I didn't even know that was on my list, but I checked that off anyway. So I have a lot of stuff to do up the road. Let's go do it. On March 9th, 1916, Pancho Villa and his men raided the town of Columbus, New Mexico, which was located just across the border from Villa's stronghold in Chihuahua, Mexico. The raid was intended to gather supplies and weapons for Villa's forces, as well as to retaliate against the U.S. government for its support of Villa's rival, Venustiano Carranza. The raid began in the early morning hours with Villa's men crossing the border into Columbus on horseback. The town's residents were caught off guard and Villa's men quickly began looting and burning buildings. They also attacked the town's small detachment of U.S. troops, killing several soldiers and civilians. The raid lasted for several hours with Villa's men eventually being driven back across the border by a hastily organized U.S. force. In total, 18 Americans and more than 80 of Villa's men were killed in the raid. The raid on Columbus was a significant event in the ongoing conflict between Villa and Carranza, as well as in U.S.-Mexican relations. The U.S. government responded to the raid by sending troops into Mexico in pursuit of Villa, but the expedition ultimately proved unsuccessful in capturing him. This museum in Columbus, New Mexico is actually completely free. They run on donations, they sell postcards and stuff like that, but they have a lot of information about the railroad in the town. They also have a lot of information about Pancho Villa and the Mexican Revolution and kind of everything that happened here. Um, and I thought one room was really neat. The room that I'm in right now was curated by basically the locals. So everything in here is just donations from people in the local town that have decided that they want to keep the history of this town somewhere safe and collective. And I thought that that was really, really neat. And there's everything in here. I mean, there's just random stuff. There's a ton of information about these people. This lady right here was a school teacher. Her schoolhouse constantly was raided by Apache Indians. I mean, just random, random stuff. And uh, definitely a very cool place to visit if you make it to Columbus. I'm gonna be like super careful opening this, but it's pretty cool to get to look at a Sears Roebuck catalog. Everything, they had everything. Sears sold everything. These guitars, these mandolin, this is $3.95. This one, they have it in a binder, but this is a 1902 Sears Roebuck catalog, and you could get this. 
Parlor, Oregon for $27.45. These things are insane to me. These things trip me out. $1.75 for a stool to play an organ on. Flutes, trumpets, I mean that flute is right there, 49 cents for a piccolo. This is all fishing lures and stuff. They're all like three cents, four cents, five cents. This museum that I was wandering around is actually inside the original rail depot that was in Columbus, New Mexico. So the building itself was built in like the late 1800s and then they decided to put the museum and then outside they had like this old fire truck, the first fire truck that was in the town. They had a couple of other things outside that you could check out. Unfortunately, as with the last kind of couple of weeks, I have been dealing with just a ridiculous amount of wind. It makes it impossible to film outside without you guys, you know, hearing that wind sound coming through the mic. So I had to do a bunch of voiceover for this video, but I went and I paid the little fine that they had. These guys didn't want to honor my past, but whatever. Um, I paid the fine that they had to camp in Pancho Villa State Park. And they also had another museum with a lot more information on Pancho Villa. So he was a Mexican revolutionary and military leader, leader who played a significant role in the Mexican Revolution from 1910 to 1920. He was born on June 5th, 1878 in Durango, Mexico and died on July 20th, 1923 in Peral, Mexico. Villa grew up in poverty and became involved in banditry as a young man, eventually joining the revolutionary forces led by Francisco Madero in 1910. He quickly gained a reputation as a fierce and effective fighter and rose through the ranks of the revolutionary army. During the Mexican Revolution, Villa led a series of successful military campaigns against the government of Porfirio Diaz and later against the government of Victoriano Huerta. He was known for his unconventional tactics, including his use of guerrilla warfare and his ability to mobilize large numbers of peasant fighters. Actually, right here, this is a copy of his death mask, which was really interesting to see. It's not the exact one, it's a recreation, but the fact that they made death masks of people back then was pretty crazy, and to see something as historical as that was pretty cool. So, despite his military success, Villa was a controversial figure known for his violent tendencies and his often erratic behavior. He was also known for his charisma and his ability to inspire loyalty among his followers. Um, this state park is really cool and just full of history and it's really cool because I slept like 10 feet from this sign and that sign is literally where like the offensive took place. So this state park is actually inside of the old fort. So the old fort in this town was right here and there's even a couple of historical buildings and things like that. This is the hill and there's a picture of soldiers scoping out. You're looking towards the Mexican border right here. And there's some pictures of soldiers scoping that out looking for uh, Pancho Villa. This I also thought was really interesting. So when they went to go chase Pancho Villa out of America, this was the first time that the United States Army ever used vehicles. Until then, they had used um, horses and cavalry. All right. I've done a lot of the historical, like legit historical stuff. So now I'm going to kind of wander around. Oh my God. <laughs> that is a large owl and owls are silent when they fly. And that thing scared me. Oh my goodness. Anyway. As I was saying, and I catch my breath from nearly having a heart attack, I'm gonna do some urbexing in the area. I don't think there's a whole lot, but there is some creepy abandoned stuff to walk around and take pictures of. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That looks like a basketball hoop, or backboard anyway. Do this while I have the opportunity though. Dude, that owl seriously scared me. This right here is the location of the old bank, and I actually think the safe room. And uh, somebody ended up building this shrine, which I thought was actually kind of cool. So as I'm wandering around this town, I'm just seeing weird things. I found it interesting. I was just in Sepulpa, Oklahoma. I had never heard of it until like last week. And then all of a sudden, 
he you know that name Sepulpa Oklahoma shows up again when I'm visiting that hotel so I thought that was really interesting there's not really much left to look at here at this hotel um this is pretty much torn down so I just kind of wandered in there right here is this is a labyrinth and it was abandoned so I, I thought that was really, really interesting. I've never come across a labyrinth like that, but, uh, you know, there's an abandoned labyrinth down here, as well as this, which is called the Perfect Man Shrine. It's a recreation. Somebody recreated the tomb of Meher Baba, who was a spiritual teacher and leader in India in the late 1800s to early 1900s. He was a proponent of silence as a means of achieving spiritual enlightenment and spent much of his life in seclusion, communicating with his followers through hand gestures and written messages. Um, it's a His actual tomb is a pilgrimage site, but somebody down here in Columbus, Mexico, decide, or New Mexico, decided that they were just going to build the shrine. So whoever built it, they are no longer around. There's just some wind chimes hanging up in here, and it is now just an abandoned building. It's going to stand up for a long time, though, because it is made out of cinder block and, and whatnot. So, But it's just kind of out here, a little mini replica of this guy's tomb in the middle of the desert. So right here, I'm just exploring the town just a little bit. This is a, an area that I think was burned down by Pancho Villa right next to the water tower. Let's see if we got anything left in here. Oh my goodness. Hopefully an owl doesn't come out and scare me. Nah, the roof went in here. All the insulation, everything fell in. Yeah, just nothing left in here. Used to have wood paneling, though. So I've explored kind of what I can around here, and the wind is just not letting up. It's just been like weeks and weeks of wind. It makes it really hard for me to film because I film like outside. But uh, I'm cross your fingers for me. I'm hoping for a really nice sunset tonight. And then I'm just going to go climb that little hill right there later tonight. Try to watch that sunset. I got kind of hungry. I didn't bring any real food, but I keep like dry stuff on hand just because I think I even have a uh, freeze dried meal in here somewhere, but I can't cook outside because it's so windy. So um, that's why I keep this stuff though, because I can boil water in here. No problem. It's not going to make a, any kind of mess or anything like that. It's just easy. So I had my ramen and moved up here. It's nice. They have benches set up. I mean, they know there's one on the other side too. So you can watch the sunrise or the sunset from the top of the hill right here, which is really like the tallest point in this town. And uh, yeah, I just thought that this was a really cool shot. So it was nice. I'm going to stop for a little coffee before I head home here. This is cool. This is copper kettle coffee company and um it's actually like really historic down here and the building itself is a registered cultural property one of deming's oldest commercial buildings built 1886 it's right next door to this one it was built in 1893 it used to house a cobbler and a grocery store it's hard for you guys to see that and then it was a bar but the owner of the bar never drank because he wanted it to be run legitimately it's the last fill up before i go home and uh, this is actually going to be the end of this video guys thanks for tuning in and everything and i will see you next week